So now in this next video, what we're going to be focusing on now is looking specifically at the different types of immune cells, the effector cells that we've covered. We mentioned briefly the idea of effector cells, the cells that immediately take effect, the ones that do the dirty work of killing and defeating a pathogen upon infection. So let's understand them in a little bit more detail in the next couple of flowcharts. Before we get into the actual mentioning of those specific effector cells, what we have to sort of understand uh, about the effect of the adaptive immune response is that the adaptive immune response is going to be basically uh, sectioned out into two separate levels, two separate arms that are going to work simultaneously. Adaptive immunity is going to take place as both a humoral response with it with a humoral response and it's also going to take place with what is known as a cell mediated response so in order to effectively utilize adaptive immunity to defeat defend and kill a pathogen a humoral response will occur and a simultaneous cell mediated response will occur this is basically a double edged sword that's seen with adaptive immunity the humoral response is going to be the response that's occurring all throughout the blood and lymph of the organism. That's because a pathogen has the capability of traveling throughout the blood and the lymph, traveling to and infecting many cells all throughout the body. So you need something within the immune system that has the capability of also traveling throughout the body. That is the humoral response because the humoral response is going to be the response that involves antibodies. Antibodies are soluble, and if they're soluble, that means they can travel throughout the blood, throughout the lymph, which are very much solvent-like materials that can carry antibodies. Antibodies can therefore travel throughout the body, the humors of the body, that's why it's called the humoral response, like blood and lymph, and find and destroy or at least help kill and defend against a pathogen. So that's part one, or like half of the adaptive immune response, whereas the other half, which happens simultaneously, is the cell-mediated response. And this is also equally as important, because in this situation, what sometimes happens is that some cells get infected, right? Some host cells are going to lose the battle against a pathogen, and the pathogen will infect the host cell. But what has to happen is you have to sort of um, sort of try to figure out how you can get rid of these pathogens even if they've already won the battle against the host cell. You want to prevent further infectivity, further infection through two other cells. So if an infected host cell has a pathogen within it, you have to destroy it actually. An in infected host cell is going to be destroyed in the cell mediated response by what are known as specialized T cells. And we'll talk about what types of specialized T cells do this a little bit later. But again, this is basically the B cell response and this is basically the T cell response. But what I think is important to recognize, and this is sort of a new flowchart now, it's a very short flowchart on the top here, but a new flowchart to recognize is that there's got to be some sort of communication or middleman between both of these. Even though this explicitly involves B cells and this explicitly involves T cells, there's actually going to be a very important mediator for both of these. And those are going to be known as effector cells that are called helper T cells. And that's what we're going to be focusing on initially as we look at the effector cells of adaptive immunity. This will be helper T cells one. Now, what we want to understand about T cells, the helper T cells specifically, these are usually abbreviated as T sub H, is that they will trigger both humoral and cell-mediated response. They are very, very powerful in this regard. They trigger both humoral plus the cell-mediated responses of adaptive immunity. How so? What do they do? Well, T cells, I mean helper T cells specifically, are really good at producing signals, and this is a big idea in immunity, producing signals to initiate antibody production to tell antibodies to be made, aka to activate B cells. And therefore, this means that helper T cells are going to be involved in the humoral side of adaptive immunity. Now, why is that? Well, that's because anything involving antibodies is about the humoral adaptive immune response, as stated up here. So if you produce these signals that make antibodies or tell B cells to make antibodies, you're, of course, going to be involved in the humoral arm of adaptive immunity. In addition, 
we have to talk about cell-mediated. How do helper T-cells affect cell-mediated responses? Well, what they do is they also are going to activate T-cells that are very good at killing infected cells because they are too far into the infection to even save. you got to just kill them and get rid of them so that there can't be any further infection. So helper T-cells will trigger cell-mediated responses to pathogens by activating T-cells which kill infected cells. These are separate T-cells. These are not the same T-cells as the helper T-cells. These are known as cytotoxic T-cells. We'll get to them a little bit later. This is why helper T-cells are also involved in cell-mediated response to infection. What you want to keep in mind about this idea is the following. These helper T-cells, though they're involved in triggering humoral and cell-mediated responses, please keep in mind that helper T-cells themselves do not, they do not directly kill pathogens. They do not directly kill pathogens. They're not involved in the actual, you know, real dirty work of the battling between pathogen and immunity. So we do not directly kill pathogens with helper T cells. Do not directly kill pathogens slash infected cells, let's say, like anything that already has a pathogen within it. Instead, what they do is they only produce signals that trigger other cells to do that job of killing pathogens or infected cells. So we'll state that they only produce signals. They're very good signaling cells, therefore, that trigger other immune cells. That trigger other immune cells. And these are going to be like B cells and cytotoxic T cells, as we'll see later on. So again, it's very clear that helper T cells, therefore, are involved in cell-mediated and humoral adaptive immunity. That's why they're sort of the middleman between both. Now, we can also state that how do they, we, we have to ask ourselves, how do they do this? How do they produce these signals or how do they know what to do in terms of activating humoral and cell-mediated responses? Well, they themselves need to be activated. They actually don't just do this haphazardly. So helper T cells are actually going to be, uh, these helper T cells, T sub H, are activated by a very important mechanism that we've already talked about. They're activated by antigen-presenting cells, APCs, that will be displaying, of course, antigen. So when you have APCs displaying antigen, helper T cells will be floating around and they'll notice and they'll say, oh, I see an antigen. Maybe I should recognize that antigen and go and tell my B cell brothers and my cytotoxic T cell brothers, hey, this is something we have to kill. This is something you guys have to kill because I can't do it myself, as stated here. You guys go and figure out what to do with them. I just found out that they're infecting these cells. The APC just told me. So we can state that first and foremost, T cells will recognize many different types of antigen presenting cells. You need to have these cells like dendritic cells, which are a class of antigen presenting cells, like macrophages, which are a class of antigen presenting cells. And even B cells themselves can actually represent an antigen presenting cell. Basically, this is the connection between innate and adaptive immunity. These are really characteristic of innate cells, macrophages and dendritic cells that just consume and phagocytose pathogens. When T cells, or helper T cells specifically, notice the antigens that they present on their surface, they are going to then activate, become activated, and then go and tell the B cells and the other T cells, hey, you have to figure out what's going on because macrophage APC just told me, hey, this antigen has just been infected or just been consumed. Overall, what we state with this activation of helper T cells is the following. Antigen presenting cell is basically going to display an MHC that is this molecule that's very good at combining with an antigen fragment, right? So when you combine both of these things, MHC plus antigen fragment on the cell surface, the helper T cell cannot just figure out what's going on on the inside of the cell. It's floating on the outside of the cell, and if it notices this also on the outside of an infected cell, it will then recognize it. This, can, this idea of displaying a fragment of an antigen can either be displayed 
it's either displayed on two types of MHCs actually. Theirs could be displayed on an MHC class 1, MHC Roman numeral 1. This is actually seen in all cells. All cells have the capability of displaying an antigen on MHC1. But T cells, helper T cells, cannot actually recognize MHC1 that well. They're much better at recognizing antigen displayed on MHC class 2, MHC Roman numeral 2. This is actually found only within antigen presenting cells. So macrophages, dendritic cells, B cells, possess the capability of displaying an antigen fragment on MHC class 2. This will then be a molecular signature, something that can be read and recognized by a helper T cell in order to activate that helper T cell. So this is a molecular signature that ensures that ensures um, the helper T cell recognizes an antigen presenting cell and whatever fragment it may be presenting on its MHC class 2. The MHC class 1 will be important later on when we talk about how cytotoxic T cells know what to kill and who to kill. But for right now, helper T cells, in order to uh, adapt, in order to activate humoral and cell mediated responses, need to get a message from an antigen presenting cell. That antigen presenting cell can only display the fragment of the antigen on an MHC2 that combines with a helper T cell to give you an overall activation of helper T cell. We'll continue this look at how helper T cells do their job in the next flowchart.